What was the genetic makeup of the Bale Beaker people? A culture that had a profound impact on the genetics of Britain, Ireland and Iberia. Now before this, let's get a quick overview of the Bale Beaker complex for those that are not too familiar with it. I have made other videos on them, but as a general overview, the Bale Beaker culture refers to an ancient archaeological culture that existed for around 1000 years, from around 2800 to 1800 BC. It gets its name from the shape of the pottery, drinking vessels in the shape of inverted bells. Now the people that belong to the Beaker complex can be identified because of the artefacts they are often buried with, such as their pottery. This pottery first appeared on the Iberian Peninsula, but within less than 100 years, this ancient culture had spread across much of Western and Central Europe and into Britain and Ireland, including reaching parts of Europe such as Sardinia and Sicily, in addition to parts of Northern Africa. Although the Bell Beakers lasted in Britain until around 1800 BC, in continental Europe, the culture lasted around 500 years until 2300 BC, when it was replaced by the Unitized culture. In general, the Beaker complex replaced and interacted with previous archaeological cultures in Europe, such as the Corded Ware and Funnel Beaker cultures. In its mature phase, the Bell Beaker culture is understood as a complex cultural phenomenon involving metalwork in copper and gold, long distance exchange networks, archery, specific types of ornamentation, and presumably shared ideological, cultural, and religious ideas, as well as social stratification and the emergence of regional elites. As far as burial practices, single burial, communal burial, and the reuse of Neolithic burial sites are found throughout the Beaker zone. It does seem as well that kinship played some role in Beaker burials, with a biological mother and her son buried together at a Beaker grave in Luxembourg, for instance. Now, why should you care about the genetic makeup of the Bell Beaker people? Some of you may be asking. Well, they had a deeply profound impact on the genetics of Britain, Ireland, and Iberia, and if your ancestry is connected to these places in any way, there's actually a good chance that you are related to them, to some extent at least. Within a few hundred years of reaching Britain, for instance, this beaker culture introduced high levels of steppe related ancestry and was associated with the replacement of approximately 90% of Britain's gene pool, according to a study published in Nature in 2018. Bell Beaker DNA also shows up in the pics, and I obviously just made a full video on Pictish DNA and their incredible symbol stones that I'll link above if you haven't seen before. In Ireland, a 2015 study estimated that roughly a third of Irish Bronze Age ancestry was replaced by the introduction of a people who brought steppe related ancestry with them. The Beaker culture is considered the likely vector for this spread, with all three ancient Irish individuals in this study having the Y chromosome lineage R1B M269, which is associated with the Pontic Caspian steppe. In Iberia, one study published in 2019 looked at the genomic history of the Iberian Peninsula over the past 8,000 years, and it found, from the Bronze Age, from around 2200 to 900 BC, we show how ancestry from the Pontic Caspian steppe appeared throughout Iberia in this period, albeit with less impact in the south. The earliest evidence is in 14 individuals dated to 2500 to 2000 BC who coexisted with local people without steppe ancestry. These groups lived in close proximity and had mixed to form the Bronze Age population after 2000 BC with 40% ancestry from incoming groups. The Y chromosome turnover was even more pronounced, as the lineages common in Copper Age Iberia, I2, G2 and H, were almost completely replaced by one lineage, R1B M269. These patterns point to a higher contribution of incoming males than females, also supported by the lower proportion of non-local ancestry on the X chromosome, a paradigm that can be exemplified by a Bronze Age tomb, containing a male with steppe ancestry and a female with ancestry similar to Copper Age Iberians. Now what about the genetic makeup of the Bell Beaker people? Well, as you probably guessed by now, the Y chromosome lineage of Beaker connected males is associated with R1B M269 a subclad of the haplogroup R1B in general, which is associated with steppe migrations. This map shows the general distribution of the R1B haplogroup today, and as you can see, it's highest in Britain, Ireland and the Iberian Peninsula, lands associated with the Beaker people. Now let's look at a practical example. This is the Amesbury Archer, 
a Bronze Age Belby man who was found in a grave near Stonehenge in England, who was about 35 to 45 years old when he died. He was given the name Archer because of the number of arrowheads found buried next to him. He is thought to have spent his childhood in Central Europe before moving to ancient Britain, making him one of the earliest Belbeaker migrants identified. The Archer's paternal line ancestry was derived from steppe pastoralists, with his Y chromosome haplogroup being RL151, a subclad of R1b. Another grave only a few feet away from the Archer was for a younger man who also belonged to RL151 and was further classified as RL21. The archer, however, did not only have steppe ancestry, but also had relatively high levels of early European farmer or Neolithic ancestry as well, showing the presence of earlier peoples. Now, if we return to this 2018 study published in Nature, this study has some really interesting insights into the genetic makeup of the bell beakers in their paper titled The Beaker Phenomenon and the Genomic Transformation of Northwest Europe. They first note the variation in beaker complex ancestry across Europe. Individuals associated with the beaker complex are notably heterogeneous within the European climb, along an axis of variation defined by early Bronze Age Yamnaya individuals from the steppe at one extreme and Middle Neolithic and Copper Age Europeans at the other extreme. This suggests that genetic differentiation among beaker complex associated individuals may be related to variable amounts of steppe related ancestry. The authors continue by expanding their model of Bell Beaker ancestry. We modelled their ancestry as a mixture of Mesolithic Western and European hunter gatherers, Northwestern and Anatolian Neolithic farmers, and early Bronze Age steppe populations. The first two of these contributed to the ancestry of earlier Neolithic Europeans. We find that in areas outside of Iberia, with the exception of Sicily, a large majority of the beaker complex associated individuals that we sampled derive a considerable portion of their ancestry from steppe populations. By contrast, in Iberia such ancestry is present in only 8 out of the 32 individuals that we analysed. These individuals represent the earliest detection of steppe related genomic affinities in this region. We observed differences in ancestry not only at pan-European scale, but also within regions and even within sites. One implication of this is that even at local scales, the beaker complex was associated with people of diverse ancestries. So it appears that we can model bell beaker DNA as a mixture of early Neolithic populations of Europe and then steppe populations that came in during the Bronze Age, although there's quite a lot of variation even within local sites in the beaker zone as far as the ancestries of these people. Obviously one culture that was extremely connected to the spread of steppe related ancestry across Europe was the Yamnaya culture. I have made various other videos on them previously that I'll link above if you haven't seen them before. Some studies have modelled bell beaker ancestry as deriving around 50% of their DNA basically from the Yamnaya. Although this is obviously maybe a bit of an oversimplification in general, and as we have seen there's so much variation in the beaker zone, to put a precise number on the connection between the Yamnaya and the bell beaker culture is probably quite futile to be honest, but in general there is obviously that connection and the Yamnaya culture was instrumental in the spread of, of steppe related ancestry across Europe. Another point I'll quickly note is that the way people looked in Britain and Ireland may have actually changed with the introduction of the beaker folk. Before, people in Britain and Ireland are generally thought to have had olive brown skin, dark hair and brown eyes. In comparison, the bell beaker people brought genes associated with a significant reduction in skin and eye pigmentation, with lighter skin, blue eyes and blonde hair becoming more common in the population. The three individuals from the Irish study we looked at earlier, for instance, all had at least one copy of a haplotype associated with blue eye colour, in the Hair C2 or Oka2 region. Beaker people were potentially taller and heavier boned as well. Now it's important to note that research into bell beaker DNA is only really just getting started over the last decade or so, and in the next decade or two there'll be a lot of research that will really help us map the bell beaker people in much more detail. One element that's probably quite a common denominator in the bell beaker complex in general was the presence of step related ancestry, and as we know the Yamnaya culture was instrumental in this spread. But to find out more about the Yamnaya people and whether the spread across Europe was as violent as some may depict, please click here. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and hit the bell and tell your friends and family about this channel, and I'll see you next time.